What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Mike Sasser, boudoir photographer in Los Angeles, California, and today we are doing another photography critique. I'm so excited, last one I think went really, really well, and uh, I can't believe it, but I got over 70 submissions, seven zero. I'm just so grateful for everyone that sends stuff in. I know it can be scary to share, it's you know really vulnerable to put your pictures out there for the whole internet to see and, and even have them be critiqued. So I just really appreciate everybody who, who went for it and uh, I hope you get a lot out of this. Now before we really jump in, I just have a few things to go over. The first is that the last time I put uh, the critique video up, I got a lot of messages on Instagram of people asking me to critique their portfolios. I saw your critique on YouTube, can you go through my images and critique them? The answer will be no. Uh, I'm doing these critiques specifically on YouTube so that a large group of people can get all the information that I'm sharing with each of these photos. Definitely come say hi, leave some comments on some photos, ask some questions. It always gives me ideas to use on these YouTube videos, but I won't be doing any like account critiques through, uh, through Instagram. Next, if you did submit a picture but you don't see it in this critique, it probably means one of two things. The first thing is I probably just I probably just really liked it and there wasn't enough for me to uh, say about it, critique about it, for me to share with a group of people. And actually a few of those pictures that I really liked, I'm just going to put them at the very end of this video so stick around to see the submissions that I got that I just thought were just really good photos. The next reason why you might not see your picture is because there's some similar reasons why I might be critiquing a photo, uh, for instance, posing or lighting. And if your picture is pretty similar in the same critique that I would give of another picture, I just didn't have time to to answer the same critiques on different photos. And the final thing before jumping in, if you wanna be a part of things like this that I'm doing in my YouTube channel, the best place to go is my Instagram because that's where I'm posting in my stories, hey guys, I need photos for this, hey, I'm putting together something like this, and that's where you'll be able to communicate with me the easiest. Also, I just wanna say that these are completely my opinion and the next professional boudoir photographer might give completely different advice, but this is what I've learned over the years that works for me, and so I wanna share that knowledge with you guys, and if it works for you, great, and if it doesn't, that's okay. Okay too, but hopefully it's helpful in some way. All right, let's jump into these photos. So we are gonna start with this one right here. Now this one, I actually love pretty much everything about it except just one thing, and this is a, this is a common element that has shown up in a lot of the different photos that I looked through, and it's that there's this intersection between her head and uh, this bar that goes across the top. Now, I love the lighting that hits it, the pose is amazing, the lines that you've got right here, her hair is flowing onto this side, her hands look natural and real, you've got this reflection, it's amazing, there's just this section right here. Now, the tricky part about this is that I think the low angle is what adds so much connection to this photo, but at the same time, if you get up a little higher to take this picture down, there wouldn't be that intersection, but I think also you'd lose some of the connection. So if this were a client photo, I'd probably leave it as is. If it was something that I was like printing for my studio downstairs as like one of the sample wall art pictures, I'd probably take that out, but I, I really, really love this image. All right, so there's a couple things that I would change in this image. First of all, I think I love the suggestion of it. The crop top look is really good. I love the fishnet style. Um, a, few of the, a few of the big things is obviously it's a little bit too bright, so I would bring the exposure down. There's also all these little things here in the, um, in this, in the photo up here, up here, and then again by her head that I would probably just get rid of. If it's gonna be an all white background, just let it be an all white background. I don't think those things are necessarily framing, framing the image. And then also I would warm it up a touch. So bring the exposure down. If you've got unnecessary things in your photo, just go ahead and leave them out, crop them out, or just grab your spot removal tool in Lightroom or Photoshop and just go ahead and get rid of that. All right, so I like a lot about this photo too. The way her hair is following, I think is really nice. I think the light on her is really, really beautiful. This picture, I think, frames it up nicely, and this lamp, I think, frames it up nicely, but this cable is just, I think it's just, um, if the light's not on in the first place, then you don't need to have the cable in it. I might also do the same with this. This is just about cleaning things up. If things are distracting like this in the background, they're gonna take attention away from your subject. So while you guys are setting up your shots, just really be mindful of your backgrounds. Um, I might also have her hips down a little bit more and her knees bent. That might be a little bit personal preference, but the main thing in this photo I wanted to share was uh, little things like that. You'll see like, um, like cups in the backgrounds of photos or you'll see 
wires or you'll see different things like that. As much as you can clean it up, the better. Okay, I like this photo a lot for a, for a lot of reasons. I love its simplicity, I love its motion. Um, typically like motion blur would be seen as kind of a negative thing, but in this, you can see that her robe is actually spinning. It is moving with her, which I really like. I think she's got a peaceful expression on her face. The light is nice, everything. The only thing that I don't love is her feet don't look that comfortable. Uh, I could imagine her on tiptoes with her feet crossed or like taking a step or something like that. But in this particular moment, it just, she's kind of got her knees bent. Looks like she's in the middle of something. She's not as comfortable or she's not as balanced. So in this photo, I would just basically say like, all right, this is perfect. I love everything you're doing with your upper body. All we're gonna do is kind of change up what you're doing with your feet. So get on your tiptoes, spin around this way, spin around that way. Be a little bit more balanced with your lower body as you're spinning your upper body. This photo is great. So everything, there's only one thing about this photo that I would change. It's interesting. So when going through a lot of these critiques, going through a lot of these photos, I think that there are so many elements that are working. And then it's just that one thing that sort of like gets in the way. So in this photo, it's being framed, which is really nice. You've got this guy here, you've got the door here. So it's drawing your attention in, which is really nice. I think the crisscross of her legs, this line that you've created here is really great. I love that. The, the shirt is kind of coming off, which I love. The only tricky part about it is that it looks like she's walking away, which is normally how I would do this shot, but she's walking away pretty much into a wall. There's nowhere for her to go in this situation. And it doesn't look like she's, stagnant and just taking off her shirt or that she's you know heading into the bathtub or something like that it really does look like she's walking towards that wall she's run out of room so if you're going to do this shot i would do it kind of more in a living room setting or maybe with her going a couple of steps back uh, further back towards the door so it looks like she's got time to drop the shirt before she gets to the next thing anything like that but this one in particular it just looks like a little bit it makes sense everything that's happening except for the for the location where she's at in the room so change that up and this photo will be perfect okay so this is another example of where you've nailed one thing which is i think the light the light coming in on her is really beautiful the way you've got this highlight to shadow highlight to shadow this highlight to shadow here I think is beautiful. I think it's perfect. The thing that kind of gets me on this one are, first of all, I don't love the love the pillows. I don't think that they make a whole lot of sense in this, in this setting, but the expression on her face doesn't necessarily match with that she's in lingerie. And what her hands are don't, doing don't necessarily match with that she's in lingerie and she's heels and she's laying on this sort of wood structure. So for me, it kind of takes it out of context a little bit. Like what would she be doing? Would she be uh, sleeping? Would she be thinking about something specifically? Would she be looking outside waiting for somebody to get home? Would she be, is there tension? Is there, she just sort of looks like she, she got all dressed up and then kind of laid down on this seemingly uncomfortable, you know, wood surface. So just sort of that congruency that I'm looking for in a photo when I'm shooting, I'm trying to say, would this ever take place in real life? How would it make sense to take place in real life? How could I imagine being in that setting in real life? And those sort of things will just add to the, like the realism of the photo. So that's kind of where I get stuck a little bit on this picture. Okay, so this photo I think is amazing. Uh, this is just one of my, one of my earliest tips I would say is just to point the toes and then to add some separation. So I'll, I'm going to go over this a bunch in some of the future photos, but basically her legs or two knees kind of turn into one leg here. You can't see the other photo. So, or you can't see the other leg or the other foot. So I recommend that go ahead and point those toes. That'll give them some space, some shape. And then as you separate them, instead of them looking like this, and now you can only see one of my hands, as you separate them. Now you can see two. So I think that'll help help nicely because you've got the two knees, two legs are really beautifully seen. Her two hands and arms are pretty nicely laid out. And then it just sort of goes into this dark area in the back. This photo I think is near perfect. I mean, the only thing that I would change is I think there's too much weight being given to this side of the photograph. If you were to literally cut this in half, you would have about 90% of your, of your subject all taking place on the left side. So that's the main thing that I would do is I would just bring it in and crop it a little bit. So I might do that because now the window, the brightness of the window isn't taking our attention away. She's taking up more of the frame if we undo this. Yeah, I mean, I, I like it as a creative crop, but probably I would still try and focus on, on the subject a little bit more. This is a really common pose that I see people do when they first start out with the legs up against the wall. I wouldn't say any boudoir photographers that I know and follow 
and are like consistently booking a ton of work do this particular pose. Um, so I would, I would just probably just skip it in, in the future, but this can be done well. And the problem with this one is that we don't really get a sense of, of who she is or the, or the shape of anything. Pretty much we only have the top of her head, her nose, you've got the bow and then the legs all of a sudden. So there's not really any sense of shape or, or anything like that. So if you're going to do this photo, go around to the side. So that way you can see the legs come down and then her body, her head, her face, or she could be turning away. Bring the elbows up. Just add a little bit more shape. Right now it's everything sort of layered on top of each other. You can't get a sense of, uh, you know, that perspective. All right, so let's see, what would I change in this picture? So first of all, I think that the retouching is really, really done well. Her skin looks really good. Uh, I think her makeup's really good. Her lip color, I think, matches her really well. I love that the top is kind of falling off. The things that I notice in this picture are that the light is like extremely bright behind her. I've done this in the past, but in this case, I think it's a little bit distracting. The other thing is she looks pretty tense with her shoulders. She looks kind of like, I don't know, bringing the shoulders up in this way. Just she looks like she's holding a lot of tension. And I think in boudoir, the more relaxed or more uh, like free flowing, the more free they seem, kind of the sexier it can be. So in this particular shot, lowering those shoulders, kind of relaxing those shoulders, or if she does want to bring one up, you can you can have her drop the other, and that'll balance it out a little bit more. But that just kind of shooting directly into the light, I don't typically do that as much unless I'm doing a silhouette. Typically I'll move to the side and just use the backlight to kind of highlight some of the features of their face. Now I debated whether or not to put this in for a long time. I think just in general, this photo is pretty much perfect. I love her tattoos. I love, uh, I love the framing of it. You know, you've got her, I'm gonna bring this guy up. You got her framed between these two spaces. The light on her is really, really good. I love this curve in her back here, the way she's pointing her toes. I think it's just, just fantastic. The only thing that I struggle with is all of the different colors of light that are happening. So you've got this warm light here, you've got these red curtains, you've got this blue. It's just so much going on. So probably what I would do is I would bring this into Photoshop and I would desaturate all of this or warm this up so that I think this punch of blue is sort of throwing me off in the photo. It's like warm, 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 cold, super cold over here. So I wouldn't necessarily change the blue here, but you can see the color on the sheets is really blue as a result of your background light is a tungsten light, which is a warm light. The sun coming in is hitting the sheet and that's giving you your blue light. So that's the small thing that I would put in there. But overall, I think this photo is just amazing. Okay, so let's talk about what works in this photo. So her pose, I think is really good where this hand is placed is super suggestive. She's breathing through her mouth, which is really good. She's kind of peeking down, which gives suggestion. This hand looks really natural, but these highlights are pretty blown. They are pretty, pretty bright. So I would do two things. I would first, I would first bring down the exposure, which you can do in Lightroom very, very easily, or you can just crank your shutter speed, lower your ISO, any of those things would do it. And then the next thing is, again, it's a super, super small thing, but this intersection right here, especially since this is so bright, that it sort of looks almost like, it's hard to tell where her hip starts and the sheets begin. Getting up just a touch or getting down just a little bit will be a clearer intersection to show the, the shape of her hip, which is really beautiful. So the main thing that I think is struggling about this photo is just its overall brightness and that you've cut off her feet. So if you brighten this photo up a little bit, you back up, you, you're able to get those feet in there or crop in a little bit closer, I think that's going to uh, that's going to improve the photo immediately. The next thing, if you wanna get a little crazy, you could dodge and burn this photo quite a bit because actually your light is really good. You can see this little shadow here on her collarbone. You can see shadow here on this side. You've got these highlights on her legs. You've got a little shadow here, a little highlight here. Same in her arms, shadows on the outside, highlights on her arms. So if you spent about three or four minutes dodging and burning this picture, it would really, really, really come to life. That mixed with just brightening it up overall, don't cut off her feet, and I think this is a, this is a pretty good photo. So we're gonna mention the bed thing again. Um, this one also doesn't have any pillows or, uh, or a sheet over it. It looks like it really is just the comforter without the cover. It doesn't look as homey like this is her space and this is where she spends her time. I also think it's a little bit yellow, 
I wouldn't crisscross her feet like this. And her hand, this one in particular, doesn't look like it really knows what to do. You can bring that hand uh, over here so that when this finger's over here, then there's a little bit of a connection here. You can have uh, this hand that's down here come on up to her hair. You can have uh, this hand come over this way and kind of give a little bit of a cuddly look here. So you've got a couple of different options on what you can do with this hand. And then this one as well looks like you're right in between two things. It looks like she went from here to here or from here to here. But it just looks like it's a little bit, it's a little bit in between. So just to recap, uncrisscross the feet, mess up the bed, use a cover. Um, you know, a duvet cover, a little bit less orange for me. That's my style. And then with the hands, make sure the hands are doing something that makes enough sense. I personally love everything about this photo except the tilt. I kind of feel like I'm doing this when I'm looking at the photo. Is it like this or is it like this? So I would just take a step back, spin it. You know, maybe that was the point because she looks like she's falling on the bed. Uh, so it's supposed to help give a little bit of motion, but for me, it's a little disorienting. So just straighten that photo up and you should be set. I mean, look at these lines here. They're completely, completely diagonal. Perfect. So this is a super crisp, sharp photo. I love her expression. It is like intense and she's owning it and she looks powerful and raw and I love it. The two things that I would change here are one is I would center it up. So right now she's kind of occupying mostly the left side of the frame. Uh, centered up would be right over here. It's definitely not necessary. You know, you can use your rule of thirds and kind of see how you how it makes sense for you. But in this particular shot, I just feel like with this super bright window here, it's just taking up a little bit too much attention for my eye. The next thing, this is a simple posing thing, which you can um, you can choose to use or not. But this little crease in the side here is something that everybody gets. It's something that I get no matter how skinny or curvy or anything that you are. And it's created by having this hip up and this shoulder down. It creates this sort of, um, it creates this bend, this fold in the, in your body. And the way to correct that is just to lift this shoulder up just a little bit or drop this hip a little bit more or have her not quite twist as much. So that's something that I've seen in a ton of pictures. It's not something that, you know, I'm not saying it's a bad thing to have, but typically this clean line that goes, there's like, it's a little interrupted by your eyes. So uh, that's something that I try and avoid. And that's how to do it is either dropping this hip more, raising the shoulder more, or mo not twisting quite as much. So this photo is pretty good. It's a pose that I use a lot. The difference that I make in this pose is I usually have their knees a little bit wider and I have their heels instead of being kind of right under her butt, I have them come across so her arms are, are more out like this, pointed out like this. That gives a little bit of separation. And then the other thing is because you got this window here, we're losing some of the skin detail up against the window. If you take a step to the left, if you go this way, if you shoot from over here and then shoot back across this way, what this will allow is that dark curtain behind her is gonna allow it to add some separation between her skin and that window. So if we look on the left image, we've got super bright window into super bright skin and then into dark skin. But on the image on the right, what we have is the bright window into a dark background. Then the lightness of her skin shows up followed by the darkness of her skin. And this whole thing is just gonna create a ton of dimension. Moving right along. So I pretty much only shoot with a 50 millimeter lens. I would assume this is shot somewhere between like 30 and 35. And as a result, you can see the painting is sort of bending here. It's not bending, but because of the perspective, it's coming in at a slant. I can't remember whether it's called kerning or, uh, or something like that. The next thing is that uh, the bed looks really, really made. And it looks like she just kind of got, got home and after the cleaner came and then she hopped in bed. Uh, to jump on the bed. So these sort of things, I try and mess up the bed a little bit and that adds a little bit more uh, believability in the sort of boudoir sense. The sweater's about to come off. She's got her hair all done. She's wearing these uh, sexy long socks. So to do that and then just to hop on a perfectly made bed, I think there's a little bit of a disconnect. So I would do that. Uh, this is really good because I, I remember these two photos. So here's a photo and here's another shot right back to back. I personally like this one much better because I think it's more it's more personal. There's that connection. This one I find a little jarring. We're looking so far down on her, um, almost like I mean it looks like she's in a chair. So you must be standing on a ladder or something. 
The way how quickly everything falls out of focus and the tilt of her head that's not really giving us a ton of her attention is just a little disorienting for me. Whereas this one I think is way, way, way better. Also the light on these are just absolutely beautiful. Uh, let's keep going. So this one I think is beautiful on all counts minus that I don't really understand what her hands are doing. Uh, typically with this pose, I would put her hands behind her like this. Then we get this nice long leading lines here from either side. Uh, it helps them arch their back even a little bit more and when they're shaking their hair out, it just gives a real beautiful kind of all of the different lines coming down. Um, her hands look like she's kind of holding the pillows or she's like kind of giving herself a little bit of a hug. Again, when I'm shooting these things, I'm really just trying to figure out what looks the most natural, what makes the most sense. Where would their hands be placed there if nobody was there? Where would their hands be placed if there was somebody there? Those sort of things. All right, this was another one that it was kind of tough to get in here because I love literally everything about this photo except for the plant. And I know that the plant is here to add a little foreground interest, but I think that the pose, the shape that you've got on her body, the color, the light, her hand placement, her hair, the way her legs are crisscrossed give this sort of slimming effect, which I think is really beautiful. You've got this beautiful curve. You've got this curve that's amazing. So I think that the photo on its own is beautiful. The plant looks very purposeful. So it looks like you put that in there and you lined it up to specifically shoot that instead of it more being like a little bit of a voyeur, you just sort of turned to peak. She happened to be standing in front of that plant. So in this case, I would just, I would just shoot without it or make it look a little bit more ambiguous make it look a little bit more random. Let's keep rolling. So this photo also I think is too bright. You know what? I'm just gonna bring these into Lightroom real quick. Okay, so this photo I think is a little too bright. So I would just darken it down a little bit and mostly the shadows here. Perfect, so here's before and here's after. I just think it gives a little bit more dramatic. I like the way this looks a little bit better. Her skin doesn't look as blown out. The sheets aren't as bright. It's just easier to see what's going on in the photo. The next thing, again, small thing, this picture is crossing her head. If you take a baby step to the right, you'll be able to see um, there won't be any intersection there. She'll be taking up this beautiful white space that's here in the picture. I think her pose is great, her arms are great, her hair is great, all of those things, but I would move a little bit, a little bit to the right. The other thing that you can do if you wanna add more contrast to this image, because of where we're standing, so we're standing um, here maybe in the corner of the room and the, and the window is coming from just to the right of us, so the more we get off access with this and the more we create that triangle, the more interesting the light is going to be, like for an example, this photo. If you guys wanna see more about these natural lighting techniques, check out the video that I just put out covering my three different natural light techniques. So right now we're only getting shadow on this outside of her arm. We should also be able to get some shadow on the lines of her back and right here that will add a little bit more dimension to the photo. So this photo has pretty much the same problem as the previous one that we were looking at. You know, it's beautiful that we're zoomed in on her ring, but everything else is so out of focus and that and the, the window is so bright. It's so bright that when you look at this photo, it, to me, it's almost hard to see anything else but that super bright window. And then if I wanted to be really picky, this hand right here, again, it's not really doing too much. I might have it grab the shirt right here or also come up into the hair or get kind of close to the face, maybe put it on the leg. Just have it do something other than just just sitting on the bed. Um, I dig this photo. I love the lace. I love the darkness around it. The only thing that I don't love is that you've got this big highlight here on your eye and then the rest of your face is dark. Um, I would, I think it would be great to be able to see just a little bit more of your face. That mixed with, I think if I, I can't quite tell, but I think this is a hair tie. I would just get rid of that hair tie. And then the last thing, because this is so dark in here, you can't really see your feet at all, your legs at all. Either opening up your knees a little bit would allow a little bit of light to get through there or spinning a little bit, bringing your foot out so it got a little bit of light would allow this whole bottom area instead of just being kind of like a little dark blob to, uh, to get some character. The other thing you could do is you could brighten up this section just a little bit. And now you can start to get a sense of a little bit of, oh, okay, I see shoes back there. I see where the line is. Okay, I think there are three here. Perfect, okay. 
So there are three pretty similar versions of the same photo. And so I wanna take a look at each of them and, and what works with each of them and what doesn't. So the first thing is this photo is much more green than the other ones. So this can happen sometimes when you're shooting auto white balance. You can see that these are, these are much better, but even this one's a little bit more warm than this one. So one thing you can do is you can just take this clicker and select here, and that's gonna do a pretty good job. Let's go ahead and select them all and tap in again. They are much, much, much better. So you can shoot auto white balance. I don't really recommend it. Figure out what works in your space and then just go ahead and do that or, or work on correcting the auto white balance. So let's take a look at this image in the middle first. So this to me, we're too close to her with too much of a wide angle lens. I wonder if I can bring up the FX data. Yeah, yeah, so 35 millimeters this close. I don't usually do it because it just makes their head so much bigger in the frame than the rest of their body. The rest of it, I think her eye connection is good. I think the light is good. Uh, I think the pose is good. I think where her hand is good, but mostly uh, that 35 millimeter from so up close. Now let's take a look at this one here. Now that we're a little bit further away, everything looks a lot more proportional, but I would bring up this knee as well. So there's a little bit more symmetry. I think that'll make the body look a little bit more natural. And then our last shot here looks pretty good. Uh, same, I always bend the knee that's closest to me. It just is a, I think it, I think it helps add a little bit more shape. But again, I think the light is good where her hand is. As soon as you back up, the dimension I think starts to work out even better. All right, we're gonna talk about hand placement again, over and over and over again. Her hand to me doesn't look like it's kind of grabbing the shears here it looks like it's like almost used for support it looks like she's grabbing the pane of the window as a way of of doing support for me probably what i would do is have her either be having her hand in her hair or grabbing the top of her strap and playing with that pulling it off reaching down and grabbing down here is something that i would probably have her do so those are a couple of things that i would do with this hand instead of having it stretched out like this this one I also think is a little bit bright. I would bring the exposure down on this just here, bring the darks down a little bit. And then for me, I see a little bit of her, it's a little bit green, push some pink in. And then for whatever reason's happening, maybe it's the saturation boost, but you got a lot of blue in the hair here. To get rid of that, probably what I would do is I would just grab the brush and then take the saturation down and then just brush over it. I don't know if she had, maybe she has blue hair. I don't know. There you go. So here's before and after. Real simple, but you're just retaining some more of the detail and, uh, and making it work that way. Also, I would definitely have her close her eyes for this shot. Everything else I think looks really good. Her pose, her arms but her eyes being open in that way, I'm not really sure. It could mean that she's like, I would have my eyes open in this situation if I were doing crunches. If I were being intimate with somebody, I probably wouldn't. So that's how you would make that judgment call on, are the eyes supposed to be open, are they not? What else could be happening? That sort of thing. So, I mean, like this is a great, this is a great portrait. Her arm looks real delicate there. I love, I think this little space between the strap and the skin is like one of the sexiest things, which I love. It's a super flattering image of her. Her hair looks really nice. This little smirk is great. The light is really good. The only thing is, is she's obviously sitting on her knees, but we can't see her, the rest of her legs. So it's very strange to see this with this cover uh, that's a little bit higher. So this almost looks like this would be like a shot of her in like a swimming pool or something, the way you wouldn't be able to see the legs, but we know it's a bed. So I would either get up just a little bit more just so we could have some reference point for where the rest of her legs are, or I'd pull that sheet down. I'd pull that sheet down and uh, lay it more flat so that we can see it and then still shoot from the same angle. Other than that, I think this is a killer image. Wow, okay, that was a lot of images. Okay, I've got a couple more things that you're gonna wanna hear. So first of all, thank you so much for everybody who submitted their pictures. Uh, you're on the right track just by being out there and shooting and trying things and asking for help. You're already going to be way ahead of anybody else who's looking at the pictures and saying, you know what, that picture actually sucks. 
um, I could do better, I just haven't set up a shoot yet. The ones setting up the shoots and posting and sharing are the ones that are gonna make it in this industry. The next thing, again, you guys follow me on Instagram if you wanna be notified of things like this. I got a ton of entries this time. I'm gonna be doing it again probably in about a month. So if you don't wanna miss out on things like this, definitely follow me on Instagram. I don't want you guys to miss out. And lastly, I'm gonna share some of the pictures that I received that I actually really like that may not be exactly my style, but there is something in them that I think is really beautiful and I wouldn't change a thing. So enjoy these, uh, enjoy these pictures. I'll see you in the next one.